every 500 years, the church cleans house, gets rid of some things, appropriates some others. We call that a reformation. And so let me just put to you that, that there may be some truth in this because in the 6th century, we had the collapse of the Roman Empire at the beginning of the Dark Ages, the fall of Rome in 476 AD, St. Augustine writing the city of God not, uh, not long uh, uh, around that, and the presenting issue is when the civilization collapses, how does the church carry on its mission? And you had uh, Benedict of Nursia and others begin the, the monastic movement around that time, which was the church's way of evangelizing the culture. You had Pope Gregory the Great and St. Augustine of Canterbury around 540 to 604, instigating the first large-scale mission from Rome to convert the pagan Anglo-Saxons in England to Christianity. And it's hard to overestimate the importance of that move because there was a reformation in the way the church organized itself through these mission sodalities, which we're going to talk about later, to preserve and carry on mission in the face of the dark ages of barbarian assaults uh, and paganism. Well, then you have the great schism in uh, 1054 to 1056 between East and West. And yes, the presenting issue was the nature of God, Trinity, Christology, and there were a lot of uh, cultural stresses that were building, uh, differences between East and West, the political struggles between the Holy Roman Empire in the West and the Byzantine Empire in the East. But the theological issue included the locus of authority in the church. Who should be the leader of the church? Is it going to be Rome by virtue of uh, the Petrine claim of authority? And how should we understand the Trinity? The Western understanding being that you know, very, very logical and propositional. You've seen the definition of the triangle and the, uh, what is and what is not. And uh, compare that with uh, the Cappadocian fathers and the icons and the picture of Father, Son, and Holy Spirit as beings who are dancing together, that whole idea of perichoresis. Uh, so all of this going on, but again, the issue is where is authority in the church? Now, you then get to the Great Reformation in the 1500s. And of course, uh, here, beginning in 1517, we've got the question of what is the authority, the locus of authority in the church? Again, it's not a geographical question, it's a question of the role of the Bible. And of course, is the Bible going to be under the church and a creature of the church, or is the Bible going to be over the church? All right, and, and so we get the Reformation and the great solas, sola scriptura, sola fide, sola gratia, solus Christus, and soli Deo gloria. In other words, by scripture alone, by faith alone, by grace alone, through Christ alone, and glory to God alone. So there, you have 1,500. Fast forward, 500 years. Well, here we are. 